what up techies? Welcome back to the channel for everything technology of the past, present, and future. Please subscribe to our channel if you have not already. Are humans not the first civilizations on Earth? Evidence suggests that our planet has been home to other societies. The Silurian hypothesis is a theory that the signs of intelligent life can be found in the geological record. So buckle up to explore an alternate history of our planet. Tens of millions are born and die each year. As a result, we all leave traces of our existence in the air, soil, and space. However, these traces do not last forever. Our buildings will be gone in a few hundred years. Our stone monuments, plastic styrofoam Twinkies, and even evidence of our inevitable nuclear destruction will be gone. So how can we be sure that ours was the first advanced civilization on Earth? What the hell is a solution to the Silurian hypothesis anyway? According to a Doctor Who episode, lizard people are intelligent humanoid reptilians who had been dormant for 400 million years before being awoken by nuclear testing. We are, well, kind of selfish. It's hard for us to imagine that we, as individuals, will not be here in a short time. And it's even harder to imagine a time when our civilization will not exist. Still, if archaeology has taught us anything, it's that every civilization has its time. When you consider that complex life has been around for hundreds of millions of years, and that modern humans have only been around for about 100 of those years, you realize that there is a lot to learn from the past, and that there is plenty of time for other intelligent species to evolve, thrive, and go extinct over and over again with different species. But would we even know they were here if that happened? We usually think that we can learn about ancient societies by examining artifacts, and excavating ruins. But this only works if you go back a few thousand years. When you want to go back millions of years, things get more complicated. For instance, the Earth is about 4.5 billion years old, and complex life appeared about 600 million years ago. Where did all of the land that was exposed go? Every other piece we've discovered is from a more recent period. Because of plate tectonics, it is difficult to find evidence of prehistoric civilizations because the land masses we see today were once the ocean floor. This makes it more challenging to travel through time. It is significantly more difficult to find fossils than most people realize because, daily, new land is formed while older land is eroded into dust. It is necessary to have stony organs such as bones and teeth and tough coverings such as shells. Rapid burial is required to maintain high pressure for the minerals and low oxygen levels to prevent decomposition, which is an event that only rarely occurs in nature. Only a few thousand nearly complete fossils have been found even though there were trillions of dinosaurs roaming the Earth over 180 million years ago. It is estimated that over 2.5 billion Tyrannosaurus rex once lived and died on the planet. Still, there have only ever been 100 fossils discovered, and only one of those fossils is complete. According to Schmidt and Frank, human artifacts such as roads, cities, machines, and megastructures would only last a few thousand years, and it is improbable that they would be found. In light of this, direct evidence such as this can only be traced back approximately 4 million years, and this is the case even if the entire human race is ignored. Because of the widespread industrialization that is taking place all over the world right now, researchers 100 million years from now will be able to piece together clues about our species' existence. The authors of the Silurian hypothesis define civilization as one in which automation occurs on a global scale like ours, which is encouraging given that definition. The amounts of gold, lead, chromium, platinum, and various other metals have increased due to human mining activities. Additionally, these will be observable in the sediment at significantly improved rates. Carbon, however, is the component that will tell the tale of human civilization. Carbon, which is lost from the land and washed into the sea due to agriculture, and deforestation, is the component that will tell this tale. Burning is how humans dispersed across the globe, and it stands to reason that other intelligent life forms would follow a similar pattern. When we burn the tissue of long dead plants to produce fossil fuel, we change the ratio of isotopes in the atmosphere. This phenomenon is known as the Seuss effect or the green omelet guy differences. There are 15 distinct isotopes of carbon, but carbon-12, carbon-13, and carbon-14 are the most common ones. Like carbon-12, carbon-12 is the isotope that plants prefer to use in the process of photosynthesis. Consequently, animals that consume plants obtain their supply of carbon-12 from the plants they consume, and so on. Carbon-13, on the other hand, is created by volcanoes, whereas carbon-14 is a radioactive isotope that decays predictably over time. Both carbon-12 and carbon-13 are not found in fossil fuel, and the levels of these carbon isotopes are increasing as we continue to burn more fossil fuels. If we want to know if there was an advanced civilization one million years ago, we need to look for a significant but brief jump in carbon and oxygen levels in sedimentary layers. This will tell us whether or not there was an advanced civilization at that time. The answer to this question will tell us whether or not there was a civilized society during that era. 
However, one thing is sure is that the temperature continues to rise. Whether or not the warming we are experiencing is the result of human activity is debatable. During the time of the lizard people, which took place 56 million years ago, there was an enormous but temporary increase in the number of metals, and there was also a vast but temporary rise in the entire planet's temperature. During the Paleocene-Eocene thermal maximum, there was a dramatic change in the levels of carbon and oxygen isotopes found worldwide. The PETM lasted approximately 200,000 years, comparable to the number of humans on Earth. The Earth's temperature increased by around 6 degrees Celsius during the PETM, making it comfortable for t-shirt weather even at the North Pole. It took 5,000 years for the atmosphere to reach the level of carbon that we've done in 300 years, so what led it to reach that level so quickly? The only person who can indeed say what caused the PETM is nobody, but the best guess is that it was a gigantic volcanic explosion. On the other hand, no one can say for sure. Strangely, there is evidence of a large amount of fossil carbon in the atmosphere due to famine and sluggish people's petrol stations. When people think of the prospect of finding life beyond Earth, the name Frank Drake is frequently one of the first things that come to mind. Because of him, the Drake Equation, a mathematical formula used to estimate the number of civilizations that potentially exist in our galaxy, was first conceived and developed. You would think that by this point, given all the advancements we've made in technology, we would have discovered some evidence of the existence of other sentient life forms somewhere in the universe. But Drake himself was the one who stated that just because we haven't found any aliens yet doesn't imply that they aren't out there. Many people continue to believe that there were once ancient civilizations on other worlds in our solar system, despite the lack of evidence to support this theory. There was a time when it was believed that Mars, Venus, and Europa were all worlds that were wetter and more hospitable than they are now. It is not outside of the realm of possibility that some type of life may have existed in these worlds. Therefore, the fact that we haven't found any aliens up to this point doesn't mean that they aren't still waiting to be found elsewhere in the universe. So, what does this imply for us moving forward? If the Silurian hypothesis is correct and human civilization is not the first or only one on Earth, then it would mean that humans are merely a blip in the timeline of the history of our planet. It is challenging to consider ourselves in such a light as being inconsequential when weighed against the immensity of time. However, it is also a source of humility and inspiration. We have achieved a great deal in such a short amount of time, and there is no reason to believe that we won't continue to accomplish remarkable things in the years to come. What kind of mark will we leave? What kind of legacy do we want to go for those who follow in our footsteps? These are questions that merit some thought and serve as a helpful reminder of how essential it is to take pleasure in the here and now. The next time you feel overwhelmed by all the bad news, take a step back and remind yourself that humanity has been through tough times before, and we have always emerged more robust than before. This will help you feel more in control of the situation. We have the potential to accomplish amazing things, and there is still a great deal for us to learn. Thanks for watching and please leave a comment with your thoughts on this subject down below.